some of these well for transformer here, G30 volts, so anyway. Yes, I don't know how I get myself into these things. Aluminium I think, it's aluminium. Says feeler or sensor or something, and then we've got AC 12 volts. So this is just a temp display, and then we've got probably two LED, two live and neutral, or whatever it is, three volts and whatever, and a ground twice that do these two lights for mains on and defrost. So that's that. So on the end of this cable would be a controller of some description originally. That goes into here. We've got a relay. That's our transformer. That's all smashed. been in the wars and then we've got all this lot here which maybe that might have gone to the new controller that somebody's sort of chopped into there uh, so I'm thinking that whoever did it didn't have enough wire and they've been using the earth wires as lives because that one goes to that which is this relay here that one's got like a little crimpy wire nut on it goes somewhere Fun times, fun times down on the farm. Okay, we found a date on here on the diagram, 7th of the 2nd, 91. So that makes it uh, 94, be 30 years old, 33 years old. 33 years old, I was still at college when this was, uh, this was new. Right, we've done some wire tracing, we think that is a neutral it comes off this little bus bar here which we think is a neutral bus bar there's a block of three and a block of three there as well the next one over we think is a live because it comes from there and interestingly the neutral has a brown wire going to that and they've got a brown and blue coming out and a brown and blue coming out so we've got lives on blues which you shouldn't really have anyway we think that's a neutral that's a live so there's going to be a live to run the controller and the other live will be the switch live because sometimes they're, they're not common inside the controller then we think the third one over is probably the fans the next one we think is a defrost here because we think this little wire here powers up this relay and that switch is alive to that brown wire which we think is a defrost wire and that red wire we think is this red wire here which goes to the little light here so they must be they're not leds they might be neons or whatever they're getting 240 volts shoved into them and then the final one on the end we think it's a compressor wire which is running this contactor that lives in there so apart from the wire wire colors being wrong and very wrong because you shouldn't have a ground wire earth wire with a live on it um, that is that so we'll get our controller mounted in here and we'll get some different coloured wires. I've got some of that spiral wrap, I might put some spiral wrap around it. Because I wouldn't have... I'll see what cable I've got. I might have a bit of flex with enough cores in it. Tidy it up and see if it works. Okay, see on this we've got 240 volt, live and neutral live in there to feed the compressor and the fan supply and then we need a live in there to feed the defrosting supply uh, so we could run one live wire up there and just link it out with some wagos or something although it should apart from the defrost heater it shouldn't put a lot of current because this is just switching the contactor to do the compressors tidy up in here. Still got a bit more tidying to do. I've took these wires out because I don't like I don't like them being used
used for these sort of applications because they've only got seven cores, they're not flexible. And you see it doesn't bend, it just wants to bend the, the, the crimp uh, thingy. So I'm redoing those. Uh, we've got a hole there and a hole there. Must have had a stat on there at some point. Might have had like a defrost stat. So I'm thinking I can draw that other one out and bolt that relay in so it's not floating about. And because this thing's so old, I've got my vintage drill out of the van, which is, I'm not sure what year this dates back to, but that's got to be the same sort of vintage as this. Okay, got that relay bolted down. Um, I've done away with that broken terminal block there. And I've just put a stuffing ground in there, so that cable can't pull out. And then we've just put the, the actual wires, crimped them on to where they were supposed to be going anyway, so we've done away with two, two joints. Uh, so that's that done. So I'll get this box put up, put back, put back up here and uh, see if I can find some screws to screw it to the wall. Um, which will keep it tidy. And then we can get the control. I need to file that hole a bit bigger, it's a bit tight. I've learned the hard way, don't, if they don't fit sliding easily, make the hole bigger. Um, I've had one where I've wedged in there and it's damaged the uh, controller. So if you've made a hole and it's a tight fit for the controllers to go in, get a file on it or something, make it, make it so it slides in nice. I can't remember what I did now, I think it got stuck halfway and when I pulled it out it felt it broke it, did something anyway. Right, anyway, that can go back. Need to make that better. Put the control on. I've got these two sensors here, so I don't know. I might. I don't know. I might just join them for now. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to take the bolts out, and take the top off, and see. It's, uh, I might just join them. I've got some bell wire. I might just join them for now, just to see if it works. I don't even know if it works yet. Another use for this. plugged it in and it made a horrible noise. if you leave them coiled up. Um, it's coming down though, so we'll have to see again these sensors put in properly. Yeah, well that, that's a handy thing, these plug things, because you, you don't have to bother getting the clamp here out. You can uh, 
you know, if you get one where you think it's going off on the thermal overload, you just plug it in on this and you'll see it go over whatever it is, lock rotor ramps and then go, go back down low again and you can do that without getting the screwdriver out. That motor might quieten down. The noise is the contactor. It's took quite a few degrees out of it. Contactor is not happy. <laughs> oh, we're back up to uh, Oh yeah, so that's an interesting thing. I wonder if that is chattering enough to put the amperage up. Oh no, she's she's seized up. Our little mate there has had enough. She's seized up. Whether that was because that contact was chattering or whether that was on the way out. Oh, uh, maybe it's 7 amps, it's just the one compressor running. Spoke too soon. This is where eBay purchased something or uh, Facebook Marketplace or somewhere like that. Apparently just needed a new controller fitting. She's back in again, is she? She's chucking away again and she's seized that sword again. He's not happy. And now that is saying 1.5 amps, so I don't know if the other one. I think the other one's gone, gone off on the thermal as well. So that one's seizing up, I think that one's gone up, this one's gone off on the friction. I don't know, no, it might still be running. Yeah, maybe it's that thing. I need to read the instructions. <laughs> missed it and I could hear a whistling noise which is bad valves in one of these compressors. I said this one sounded like it was a bit chuffy so maybe that one's got bad valves in it. I might link that contact to to take that out of the equation. Let's have a look at that. See if we can get, get that to stop buzzing. I'm just wondering whether that's chattering enough to make this start and stop and start and stop, and that's why it's uh, not happy, or whether it's just it's a heap of shit. Um, you can tell the age of it because it's got the actual, it hasn't got a label, it's got the actual embossed um, uh, model number uh, plaque on there. The newer ones have a sticker. Well, they've, they've had a sticker on there for 20 years, I would think. I, I fitted them with, the, with these type of labels on, but I don't think I fitted them while I've been working for myself. And that would be 21 years. So these are good 20 plus year old compressors and the thing is 33 year old. This isn't factory. Assuming they've got the right motors on there on the fans. The condensers, I thought, looked. I, I, when I checked earlier, you could actually see through them. So, anyway, I think I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. I will have a look at this. Uh, worst case, I'll just link it out with a Wago or something. So it's hardwired into the live. They'll be on all the time, but I mean, it's not going to work. There's no safeties on them anyway. They'd just run without the evap fans if this was off. So we, we, we might try that to take this out of the equation. So both of them are going off on their clicksons or something. This one's getting ready to shit itself. Getting more chuffy. There we go, it's stalling. Maybe the condenser's one's getting out. 
one's gone off completely. Yeah, it's hot in here though, because we've just got a tin roof up here. These might even have the run current on there. If they're that old, they might be the vintage where they used to put the run current on them. I've got the contacts off on that thing there. because it's working too hard. See that one's running now. You probably set the evap probe on these normally, they keep the fans off unless the evap probe gets down to temperature. It's 25 degrees in there, that might be why. You might be lucky. Here's the freezer. Minus 22, minus 25. Probably could even have been on 502 when this was new, so we could still use yeah, we could, 94 I think they banned it. Yes. That's full of, it's had water in it, that's why that's noisy. because the noise of the washing machine next door that, they had a whistling noise come from that, that sounded like bad valves that one was disconnected completely at the moment oh well, just a load of wittering without the camera on um, yes, I did get the compressor and model numbers I'll have to check them again we've gone around the door sills are good but basically needs two new compressors 